It's a team that decides. When you go into a rehab setting, be it in a long-term care nursing home or a, a re, Whittier rehab, um, there is a, a disciplinary group, including the nurse, the social worker, you'll have the therapists that are working with you, and the medical doctor. But on top of that, the federal government, who is supplying the Medicare dollar, it mandates that a specific form called an MDS, which is a minimum data set, it's an information sheet done on each person. And you need to do one on the fifth day, the 14th day, the 30th day, the 60th day, and the 90th day. And each time one of those goes in, there is a chance that you may be told you're being denied your benefits because you're not meeting your goals. And the reason I make that very clear is if you go in for a fractured hip and you get it admitted at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to the rehab center, the physical therapist is going to come in as soon as possible because they want to get you on going because they get paid by the evaluation and the minutes that are provided each day. Plus, it's great to get started and get moving. Your response is, oh, not today. I'll do it in the morning. Come back tomorrow. You need to be very careful because three refusals means Medicare doesn't have to pay for any of it. It's a denial. So you need to pick your battles and say, you know what, I'm really tired. Let me have an hour nap. Come back and I'll try to work with you. Never say you're not going to do it. Give them an ultimatum to come back and also make sure that they know if you're dis in discomfort that you get medication to help with that before you start. But you need to know that with this group, they will do a discharge meeting. They have to make you aware of the discharge plan. If you get a denial, you do again have to put, uh, put in the appeal before noon the next day. And what they'll do is have all your medical records faxed over to them. They review everything, and then they make a determination. Once they make that determination, there is another appeal process, but in the meantime, if you're found that you were ready for discharge, you're responsible for all that back payment. So you want to make sure, uh, Debbie and I have done many appeals, and it is a long process, but sometimes it's well worth it. You may get two more weeks of rehab. If you have an HMO plan, that's a whole different ballgame. Medicare has been taken over by the HMO, and they're more gatekeepers. They may only give you two weeks to heal from a fracture hip. And as long as you can, what they call, furniture walk, and you're able to be of some way, they'll have you go home and bring therapy into your apartment. So those are things that we're able to say, no, we're not sure, we're reading the notes and they're very unsteady and they have no one at home to help them. So that's not a good plan. And between us, we're able to usually meet with the team to make a decision that's more appropriate for the scene. Because there is a regulation that, that you cannot be, a DPH regulation, you can't be discharged unless there is a discharge mm -hmm. plan which, which makes you safe. Which and, makes you and you safe need to be safe discharged. with that discharge plan. Are you from a specific facility? No. No, we're not from any facility. Because is she from a, no, they just yes. work for individuals. They just work for individuals. But by the way, interestingly, um, um, Southboro Medical Group, who, who had, they had asked us to talk to them, and they're kind of like the primo, you know, they're the, like the gold standard in terms of, I think, wonderful medical care. They just hired a full-time geriatric care, no, excuse me, they are hiring a full-time geriatric care manager. Um, we had talked to them because they had these concerns about people that were their patients that were coming home from facilities or, you know, in, in, and really 
they wanted to make sure that these people really had the right plans at home. And they came, they came to the realization when we talked to them that they really need somebody in-house just advising their patients, right, on what that plan ought to be. Yes, sir? How does the geri the question is how does the geriatric care manager get paid, and what do you charge? I mean, those are, those are important because there. Let me put it. And, and once again, I'm not advertising for these folks. You can shop, right? There is in the market, and you'll find that the market, the prices are like most markets. Prices tend to kind of cluster around a particular point. We that have a contract that we set up with our clients, and it's an hourly rate for a nurse social worker together partnership, and it's 125 an hour, and you've got both of us. And we can put together some plans and work with families accordingly. In the typical case that I've seen that we've worked, it, typically your total price ends up being yeah. you know, less than $1,000, just to get in kind of an order of magnitude number. Right. right. We don't take a retainer. Um, the advantage of having Linda and I is She's much that cheaper than us. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're Two females and one male. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, is that it's, you do have the advantage of having Linda, who's a nurse, and as Arthur pointed out, the medications are very vitally important. And Linda's also an important link to the physicians. She can call the physician, and they will, will call her back. She can talk their language. She can talk to the nurse practitioner. She can talk to them about concerns about medical situations that have the ability or, or the risk of becoming a real problem. So that's the advantage of having a nurse in a partnership, and my skills include being having the environments, the social environment, making sure that really is the best. And, and that, I guess that kind of feeds into the last, the, uh, the, uh, our last example. Next slide. So you're going from rehab and you're going home, or at least you really want to go home, right? Um, and, 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 but the question is, I mean, the next, the obvious questions. So, is that going to work? Right? What do you need at home in order to leave rehab and go home? Right? No matter what your physical or your mental condition is. There is, there is, there is not a client that I have ever had that has said, oh, I really, really want to stay at the nursing home. I mean, home, you know, how awful. Never. Right? So, Everybody wants to get home. I just had this, and as a matter of fact, in what case where we hired these folks. I had a, I have a family in, in, uh, in Hudson uh, that the husband was in the nursing home, and the wife was really not sure if she was going to be able to handle all of this because she's living you know, at home. There's, a, there's one daughter who's really close to the father who was just dead set that the father ought to come home, that we, you know, we need to be able to develop a plan to have the father come home. And so we, and we hired the geriatric care managers because I, I said to them, I said, now you're, you know, you're both looking at this from a particular perspective and I'm hearing it and I don't know, you know, I can tell you all about who's, you know, how you're going to pay for it or t to some extent, but I can't tell you what a plan could be or what the other ser outside services could be that could take care of that. And so they hired them. And, and actually the husband ended up coming home, right, M much to the daughter's delight and much to the, wi the wife's kind of, you know, she was nervous, but it's all worked out. I think it's, it, at this point, he's been home now for a couple of weeks, and, it, and it's worked out. You know, but at least if the recommendation had been, no, he really can't go, because the, the nursing home was saying, oh, no, we really think he ought to stay here. You know, we really don't think that he could go home. And, and, and maybe that was right, but, but in, in this case, at least you had a third party in terms of the family, you know, remember the goal is always to sleep well at night? In terms of the family looking at the situation, they were feeling like we have a third party professional who says, you know, this really might work. So the questions are, what do you need when you're at home? How much in addition to, you know, let's figure it out. Who are the relatives who might be able to show up and help out? What's the care plan? Do you need to hire somebody? If you need to hire somebody who is a homemaker, who are they, right? You hear these people advertised all the time, you know. I get, we get solicitations all the time from home care folks because they love to have us recommend somebody, right? as a home care. We don't know. We don't know, right? So, so one of the things that the geriatric care manager kind of knows or is paid to know is who's out there and how good they are, right? What is the family's role? 
which, which kids or who's going to be involved in making sure that, that, that mom or dad or brother or sister is going to be okay at home. Who's paying? Right? Is it Medicare? Is it Mass Health? One of the things that we've talked about at a previous seminar is that most people aren't aware of the fact that if you are, if, if you are qualified, if you are certified as being el eligible for nursing home care, then by virtue of that, uh, you're also eligible, if, if, Med if Mass Health would pay for your nursing home care because you're financially eligible, Mass Health will also give you much more in benefits to keep you at home. Why? They don't want you going to the nursing home because they have to pay a lot more money, right? But the question is, as a, as a practical matter, what are those other services? You know, kind of like, where are they? And, and, so, the, and so what's the geriatric care manager's role in all of that? I think the main role is we are the ones that are going to set this plan for you. We are going to give you options. We don't choose the health care team that will come in to assist you as a home health aide or maybe the visiting nurses. Usually upon discharge on Medicare, if you're going home with something new, something you haven't had before, they will set up appointments for the visiting nurses to come in. But that's for a very short period of time. You sometimes, when you go home, who's going to help you in and out of the shower? Who's going to help you get your medication straight? You have a lot of new ones you have to take. That's our role to set up that plan and make sure that it's working. And we make sure that we sit with the family if the family is involved. If we're working with the elder or the senior themselves, then we'll make sure they're understanding it. We also are mandated um, to make sure that the senior is safe. And if we have someone going home, an example, and they were a smoker, and in the hospital they gave it up. They had a patch on and they were doing great, but as soon as they got back into the home setting, they wanted to smoke again. Well, now you're looking at, okay, who's going to be there to make sure they're out in the kitchen with an ashtray? They're not sitting in bed having a cigarette with this new medication that they could fall asleep. You want to make sure all of those T's are crossed because you want to keep them home, but they have to be safe. And it's our job to make sure we give you options and you get to choose which ones you want to use. But we will tell you if you haven't got enough of them and that you need more if you want to stay home. 